As you can tell from the title of this video, it's going to be about dealing with racism. I'm sure most of the people watching this video have experienced some type of racism. If you haven't, I hope you never experience it. But the honest, harsh truth is that as a person of color, there's going to be racism wherever you go. Whether you can see it or whether you can't, it will be there. And I'm not saying most people are racist, most people aren't racist. But there's a high probability that you will encounter racism during your day or during your months or years. And I agree, there isn't as much systemic racism as there was eight years ago, but it still is there. It's just more subtle. So I've grown up in Zimbabwe, which is a majority black country. There's been a lot of drama between the two races in the past. And I think that still in our generation, there's still that residual tension. Even though this country is like a majority black country, um, I was lucky enough to be able to go to private schools where it's like, like that's where like the white people are concentrated. When we're young and we start off in these schools, there's no division between the races. Everyone plays with each other. Like racism isn't a concept when you're like eight years old, when you're nine years old. But as we got older, you could slowly see a division forming. The whites would sit with the whites, the blacks would sit with the blacks. Would even play at break time, would even play football, would be whites versus blacks. And by the time we got to high school, this division, it was so clear. Like you'd see white people at the side of the field, you'd see black people there, you'd see other races, like just like sitting within themselves. And I understand that there are differences in cultures, but it shouldn't account for complete separation between the races. And even though there was a separation between the races, we were still friends with each other. It's just that we weren't as close as we used to be before racism was instilled in us. And the reason why I say instilled is because there's no genetic function to be racist. No one is born racist. As you grow older, your parents instill it in you. The people around you instill it in you. But the harsh reality is many of the people my age, they had racism instilled in them as they grew up. So I grew up experiencing racism. I grew up being a recipient of racism. See, I remember this one time I was playing cricket. It was in South Africa. And I was the only black person in the cricket team. And when I was walking into bed, one of the players from the other team, I was 12 years old, says, here comes the blackie. Ah, oh, the blackie's gonna be easy to get out. Like, imagine what that does to a 12-year-old. You're already being called a blackie. Before you even really know what racism is, you're being called a blackie. I was being called, like, the black lollipop. <laughs> and, like, that was one of the more extreme examples of racism that I experienced when I was younger. But there were little things, like, you know, we'd be driving in a bus and we'd go underneath a tunnel. Then everyone would be like, oh, where's Takura? Where's Takura? You can't see him. When we were stretching before cricket sessions or matches, there was this... I don't know if the exercise is called this or the stretch is called this, but people in the team used to call it cotton picking, whatever, like cotton pickers, whatever. And everyone would be like, ah, oh, no offense to girl, cotton pickers, like. <laughs> now that I think about it, that was honestly so terrible. And obviously the common terms, you know, being called a monkey, being called a baboon, all of that, I've been called everything. Every single racist term that exists, trust me, I've been called that. And even many of the stereotypes were attached to me. People would be like, I oh, hear black, you're a thief. Ah, uh, don't leave your stuff around, ah, uh, you're thieves. And other times was masked. You'd be with like a group of white people and they would see another black person coming. It would be a homeless person, someone who wasn't high up the hierarchy. And then they would cuss them, they would call them all kinds of racial slurs. And then they would have the audacity to just be like, ah, Takura, yo, you know we're not talking about you when you say those things. You're one of us, you're one of our boys. Like that made it better. Like it honestly did not make anything better. And the mind boggling thing is at the time, I was like 13 years old, 14 years old, I'd take it as a compliment of like, ah, I'm not one of them. I'm not one of them. It's like even I was being brainwashed to like view my own race badly. But that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is how to deal with racism. From what I've said, I think you can see that I've dealt with a lot of racism. And I would actually quite, I would actually say that I'm actually quite good to, with dealing with it. And the advice that I'm going to give you in this video is not going to be the politically correct advice of like, ah, oh, do this, do this, ah, oh, report it to this guideline, whatever. Yes, I'm like, reporting does work. And I'm just giving a disclaimer. I'm not talking about times where someone's violently attacking you. I have no advice to give you when someone is violently attacking you. All, I, all the experience I have in dealing with racism, it comes in like school settings, comes in like places where you can't really be violent. Like being violent is just going to damage yourself even more. So yeah, take this advice with a pinch of salt. So the first step to dealing with racism is winning the mental battle. As David Goggins calls winning the mental battle, it's the taking of one sword. So with this, you have to make sure that the person who's saying racist slurs to you sees that they haven't hurt you. Yes, you may be hurt inside, but you can't show that. You have to be unfazed. When someone says a racist slur, nine out of 10 times they're trying to inflict pain. They're trying to make you feel less. 
They're trying to degrade you. They're trying to make you feel ashamed of who you are and make themselves like superior to you and superior to you. And the way they're doing this is most times they're doing it verbally. And since they're doing it verbally, it means they're trying to attack you mentally and break you down. You can't let them see victory. You can't let them feel like they're doing any of that. And you can't let them win. You have to take their soul. You have to show them that their words haven't hurt you. Even if they have, you have to show them and act as if they haven't hurt you. And I'm not saying don't feel angry. I'm not saying don't express your distaste to what they're saying. You have every right. In fact, you should tell them, hey, shut up. Don't say that again. Never do it in a way that compromises you. If someone calls you the N-words, don't say, oh, never say that again. It's not punching them, punching them. I'm talking about in a school setting. Like that's not going to work, you're gonna, honestly going to get yourself into more trouble by doing that. So when you're on the receiving end of a racist slur, tell them off, but do it in a calm manner. They are probably saying these things with emotion, with vigor. You reply almost unfazed, just like don't say that, respect yourself, something like that. So in this book, Reality Transurfing, there's this idea of there being pendulums in life. So what a pendulum is, it's like that thing with a string and a bobbin, it just swings from end to end to end like this, like this. So these pendulums represent energies. So when someone is being racist to you, they have that racist energy, they have that confrontational energy where it's swinging like this. So when they're talking to you, trying to invoke an emotion, they're trying to get you to attach to their pendulum and join them on their same wave. So what you must do is oppose their energy. Whatever they're doing, if they're shouting at you, reply calmly because now their energy is going to be like distorted. They're going to be like, damn, like he's not engaged. You have to do everything that you can to dismantle that pendulum, to take energy away from that pendulum. And now think about how do you keep a pendulum going? You push it with a snatchable frequency. And if someone's shouting at you and you reply calmly, what happens to that pendulum? You take a bit of energy out of it. So then as you're saying these racial slurs, as they're trying to make you angry by calling you the N-word, by calling you a monkey, by calling you a baboon, you can show your distaste. You can tell them, like, you can just be like, shut up, don't say that, but in a calm manner. So as you do that, you're going to lose energy. You're going to be demoralized, knowing that their words haven't affected you one bit. Even though they may have affected you, you're not showing that. You're not letting your emotions get the best of you. So once you do that, once someone tries to hurt you with their words and you don't even show any hurt, you've won the mental battle. So now the second step is where you can get not even revenge, but you can get like justice for it. Once you've shown them that they can't beat you, they can't hurt you, that's when you go to the authorities. That's when you go tell the headmaster. That's when you go to the teacher. You go to the boss. That's when you tell them what's happening. Well, you go to the police, whatever it is, that's when you go and you tell them what happens. So by doing this, you win the mental battle and you win the legal authority, whatever battle. And then the last step to dealing with racism is you have to educate your friends. Because let's say you can't make the situation better for yourself. You always have to have the, uh, the thought, okay, how can I make this better for other people? We have a duty to everyone in our community. So by educating our friends, by telling them off, because you know what, it's easy, our friends are comfortable with us. It's easy for them to say something racist and then be like, oh, it's a dark humor joke, got it, what Fair enough, I understand dark humor, but you have to make an attempt to educate your friends. For every person you educate, think about how many people will not receive any racism. Think about all the good you're doing on this earth. By you telling your friend off, by you telling your friend, hey, this isn't okay, you're making the world a better place. Whether it's 0.00001%. You're still making the world a better place. And what more can you do?